I want to, of course, thank everyone for joining us today. This is a, um, a big day for our city on a topic that I know a lot of us in the community are, um, are very interested in, including myself. I want to just begin by uh, taking us back to January of 2016. Uh, it was that day that I joined Army Corps leadership in signing an agreement uh, to move forward on an environmental study of which we're at today. Uh, that agreement was also a cost-sharing agreement that allowed us to move forward and ensure that we had and were led by science to come up with these alternatives that we have today. Just recently, in working with our team and our partners at the Army Corps of Engineers, we're at a point now where we can release some of our options here for the East San Pedro Bay Ecosystem Restoration Study. This study will now be moving into the environmental review process, which is the next step for projects of this size and magnitude. The Army Corps and the City of Long Beach have selected six alternatives that we will share with you today, and we'll begin soliciting information and comments and review from our partners, our stakeholders, on potential impacts and on mitigation. I'd also just like to note that while uh, the, the Army Corps and extensive um, review and science has gotten us to this point, the actual environmental review phase will actually now begin looking at these six different alternatives. And so as far as major questions on environmental impact, those will be answered through the process that now begins. But we are in a position which is exciting to share these alternatives that we're at today. And of course, each alternative will be developed further. During the environmental review process, all alternatives will be evaluated equally and presented fully within the reports back to the public. Once this report is completed next year, in 2019, we will obviously begin an extensive community outreach process and bring all our stakeholders in to make sure the study is fully vetted with everyone in the community. I, I want to begin by thanking the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, particularly the Los Angeles District, for their incredible partnership on this project. They are working hard and their team of, uh, of amazing uh, public servants and scientists have developed alternatives that provide a wide range of ecosystem improvements that are possible for the East San Pedro Bay and have collaborated with the city of Long Beach as well as our federal agencies and local governments and stakeholders. So with that, I want to thank them and I want to thank also so many other partners uh, that have been involved. And that includes, of course, the city. That includes our city council, which has been incredibly involved in this process every step of the way. Uh, that includes our environmental and community partners and advocates, uh, whether, uh, whether it's been Heal the Bay or Surfrider or the neighborhood associations, so many that have been involved in this process uh, for a long time. And so let's talk about each alternative individually, and then I'll make some, some general comments. I want to begin, of course, like every environmental review, there is always a no-build option. Uh, the no-build option is essentially if we did nothing to the current system. That, of course, will be reviewed uh, like, we, like you do on all major projects. There's always a no-build alternative. Uh, the first alternative, and I will note as we walk through these, they will each build upon uh, each other. And so um, each, each one gets built on the other, and they move and kind of add to each other. So the first one is the kelp restoration alternative. As a reminder, this study is an ecosystem restoration study. It's been that from day one. And so at, at the core is how you restore the actual ecosystem to, uh, to where we were. And so the first one up is the kelp restoration alternative. Uh, that this is also the least, um, the least cost and minimally meets the study's planning objectives. It includes basically restoration of three habitat types, eelgrass, nearshore rocky reef, as well as kelp reef, uh, in the open water by the Long Beach breakwater. We consider this the base plan for the foundation upon which more complex alternatives uh, have been built. And so the kelp restoration alternative uh, is, the ba is the base plan. I think that one's right over, right over here. The second alternative is the reef restoration alternative. It essentially takes the kelp restoration alternative that, was, that is plan one and then builds upon that by adding additional rocky shoal in the nearshore area and two rocky reefs in the open water zone to support habitat biodiversity. Uh, as you know, uh, habitat diversity, restoration of, um, 
of our ecosystem is, is critical in this study. Uh, this constructs two adjacent rocky reefs that provides connectivity between and increases our reef patches. And this is, seen ver this is very desirable in ecosystem restoration projects. As a reminder, uh, if, if this project is, is to move forward, we have to meet our ecosystem restoration uh, needs and we have to do and ensure that in working with our federal partners, we're meeting the objectives of these ecosystem restoration studies. The third alternative is the scarce habitat restoration alternative. I know these are sciencey titles, but um, that, that, that's what they are. Uh, this alternative builds upon the kelp restoration alternative and the reef restoration alternative and includes new habitat features throughout the East San Pedro Bay. So this one is pretty exciting. It's much larger in scope. Uh, this includes a 24-acre sandy island near the peninsula. Two new coastal wetlands, including a 10-acre wetland near the north of the LA River, and a 42-acre wetland just outside the port of Long Beach, and a small oyster bed by the Alamitos Bay jetties. And so it's got a lot, a lot of activity and um, it really allows us to restore a lot of the ecosystem. And you can see the additional wetland restoration projects um, that are also included. So that's, that's pretty exciting for us uh, on, on this alternative. Uh, the proximity of the proposed wetlands is within the existing Golden Shore wetland and would facilitate an exchange of species which support nursery functions. And so again, very important. And, and this alternative builds on the kelp restoration and reef restoration alternatives as well. Uh, uh, now we're moving on to the alternatives that actually require um, breakwater uh, rest, uh, reconfiguration. And so let's go ahead and talk about those. Um, the first one is the breakwater western notching alternative. Uh, this is uh, certainly breakwater modification. And, we, and the breakwater western not, uh, alternative uh, includes all of the ecosystem restoration measures that we just described. Uh, in the kelp restoration plan and proposes two 1,000 foot notches on the western portion of the Long Beach breakwater. So that's two 1,000 foot notches of, uh, of the Long Beach breakwater. Uh, preliminary wave modeling shows that this alternative would result in some increased swells and that could impact the oil islands, Pier J, as well as a Carnival Cruise Terminal. However, stones removed from the Long Beach breakwater could be used to build mitigation measures, including protective structures along the oil islands, Pier J, and up and along the coast. And so uh, the notching alternative uh, certainly increases wave activity and could uh, cause us some issues with, with some of our infrastructure, but we believe that re reusing those actual parts of the breakwater can be used to protect uh, the, uh, the infrastructure that we have here at the city. And so again, that's the two 1,000 foot notches. So we're going to talk about the final uh, alternative, which, which is the eastern removal alternative. Uh, this actually essentially removes one third of the current breakwater that we have out here in the bay. And this includes all the ecosystem restoration measures described in the kelp restoration plan and proposes to remove approximately 20 through 24 acres or one third of the existing Long Beach breakwater. Now, preliminary, preliminary wave modeling shows that this alternative would certainly have impacts on the oil islands, possibly Belmont Pier, and even uh, 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 issues around the Navy's use of their explosives anchorage, as we all know, which is out in Seal Beach. But we're looking at whether stones removed from the Long Beach breakwater could be used to build mitigation measures. And this includes protective structures around the oil islands, the Belmont Pier, and of course, we are working with our Navy partners. Just a few weeks ago, I met with the Navy uh, and the top leadership there over here at the Navy base to discuss this measure and to work together in partnership as we move forward. Uh, additionally, higher elevation nearshore rocky reefs will be added to mitigate the impacts to the peninsula and to adjacent infrastructure. And, and as you can see, certainly that would be the largest of the projects. Um, and um, certainly there is a, a, would be a large financial cost to that project, uh, but we also believe it's something that needs to be explored and looked at. I also want to note that um, anything beyond these alternatives and anything beyond the one-third uh, removal, which is the eastern removal alternative, was, was not deemed as feasible by the Army Corps and our review with the city. And so what we're showing is what uh, we believe are actually feasible alternatives 
that need to be reviewed in the environmental process. These are the six alternatives or five alternatives and the no-build alternative. And we're encouraged, of course, to see this wide range of opportunities, all of which will achieve ecosystem restoration, and two of which, of course, have breakwater reconfiguration components. As we move into the environmental, environmental review portion of the study, it's important to keep in mind that science has driven this study. Science will drive the outcome of the study. And public impact is incredibly important to us. We have said from day one that we will ensure that coastal homes and coastal infrastructure are safe. And that safety and the safety measures will be determined by the science that comes out in this study and this review. And so it's an important message to both homeowners, uh, to the Port of Long Beach, to all of our partners that share infrastructure, that we, we're ensuring that safety and protection of our infrastructure is uh, at the highest levels of this study as we move forward and have this discussion. And so I want to thank all of you for, for being here. I, I, I understand that um, the city uh, has, in, in, in the history of, of conversations around the breakwater uh, has never been at a moment where we've actually been able to release alternatives. So I understand how important this moment is and will be for the community as we review these uh, in the environmental process uh, that is ahead of us. And so I just want to thank you.